anointing. Listen, when you find that ministry, do everything in your power. Don't allow nothing and nobody to cause you to get disconnected from that ministry. Like I said, pursuing the anointing that's on that ministry, it is going to lead you to the fulfillment. It's going to lead you to the fulfillment of of God's plan for your life. I got to preach this. So the thing is, you must be willing to go after the anointing. You must be willing to pursue it. Amen. Listen, the anointing that's on a ministry, like I said earlier, I'm saying this again because I'm trying to teach you something. That anointing is rubbed on you through their books, through their CDs, through their DVDs, through their internet programs, through their TV programs, and of course, by you sitting in their live services. Of course, that's one of the simplest ways to tap into the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 9 and chapter 10 and chapter 11, the Bible says, King Saul, before he was anointed king, Samuel told him, Samuel said, listen, you're going to meet a company of prophets at this particular hill. And when you get in their midst, Samuel said, they're going to be prophesying. He said, but once you get in their midst, that anointing of the Holy Spirit that's on the prophets is going to come on you and you are going to prophesy. Amen. So listen, the anointing is rubbed on you by the law of association. The anointing can rub on you just by the people you associate yourselves with. It doesn't even have to be physically. You can associate with them through, like I said, their television programs, their CDs, their books. Amen. Take advantage of it. Every time you hear them, that anointing is rubbing off on you. That's because God is preparing you to walk in that double portion anointing. That's because God's got a great plan and a great purpose for your life. Can I get someone to say amen? Praise God. Praise God. Elisha was willing to forsake his family to pursue the anointing. Amen. I said he was willing to forsake his family. Jesus said, if you love father or mother more than me, you are not worthy of me. Amen. I'm not encouraging anyone to be disobedient to their mom and dad or to be disobedient. But there comes a time when you got to tell your family, I'm going after the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because some family members, if you don't be careful, they will hinder you because they don't fully understand what God is doing in your life. The Bible says this in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Listen, this is the second thing. If you are going to walk in that double portion anointing, you have to have the ability to hang in there. Listen, when God is using a ministry to impact your life, do you know there are going to be attacks on that ministry? Do you know there are going to be attacks on that ministry to discourage you from following that ministry? Because Satan knows if you keep following that ministry, he knows that anointing is going to rub on your life. And he knows that with the anointing, you can destroy his kingdom. So he is going to do everything in his power to break that divine connection. But I don't know about you. You got to be like Elisha. You got to say, well, if you go going to Gilgal, I know you're telling me to tarry here, but I ain't tarrying. I'm coming after you, Elijah. You are packing the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You got what I need to take to my generation, and I ain't going to let go until I receive. You got to have a determination. Like Jacob, when he said to the angel, I'm not going to let you go until you bless my soul. Do I got anybody on this webinar tonight that say, Pastor, I'm going to hang in there until I receive all that God has for me. Praise God. Elisha had the ability to hang in there. Now watch this. The word Gilgal means the place of rolling away reproaches. It's the place where God had to circumcise an entire generation who had not been circumcised because of the disobedience of their parents who died in the wilderness. Amen. 
I said the word Gilgal means the place where God takes away your reproach. It's a place where you got to let go of your past. It's the place where you got to say, listen, I'm, I got to let some people go. I've got to move on with God because I'm after something. I'm about to receive something from the hands of God. It might hurt, but I'm willing to let it go. I say some relationships, you may have to let it go because you're about to tap in to the double portion anointing of the Holy Ghost your life is being impacted for a reason praise God so he said I gotta go to Bethel we know Bethel means the house of God Elijah had something Elisha wanted which proves Elisha was a man of strong determination let's move on 2nd Kings chapter 2 verse 3 4 and 5 and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And guess what Elisha said to them? He said, yes, I know it, but hold your peace. I don't want to hear nothing else you doubt has got to say. Verse 4, And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered and said, I know it, but hold your peace. I don't want to hear nothing else you guys got to say. Listen to this. This is what I want to show you about the prophets in training at Bethel and the prophets in training at Jericho. Listen to this. They were not as hungry as Elisha. They had revelation, but they were doing nothing about it. The anointing came right in their midst and passed them by and they allowed the anointing to go and didn't even pursue it. Why? Because they were not hungry. It's proof that they took Elijah for granted. They did not honor Elijah as a prophet of God. Jesus said a prophet is without honor in his own hometown and in his own country. Are you listening to me? Jesus said a prophet is without honor in his own house and in among his own family and his kindred. Can I get a witness right there? And listen to this. The Bible says in Mark chapter 6 verse 5, this is what they said about Jesus. They said, is not this the son of Mary and Joseph? Isn't this the son of the carpenter? It meant right there that they took him for granted. They became too familiar with the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says he could there do no mighty works except to lay his hands on a few sick folk and heal them. He could not do many mighty miracles there because of their unbelief. Dishonor and unbelief works hand in hand against the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When you find a group of people who are full of dishonor, who are full of unbelief, you might as well pack your bags and move on because you are not going to experience much success being crowded in by that type of unbelief. The Bible says it didn't say that he did not want to do mighty works. It says he could not because they dishonored him. So the Bible says, so he moved on with his disciples. That's the same principle Elijah applied here. What Elijah did, he moved on with Elisha. And guess what? The sons of the prophets, they were content to stay behind. The anointing came right in their midst. They had access to it. They knew Elijah was a man of signs, wonders, and miracles. And they let Elijah with that mighty anointing pass right on. But Elisha said, I ain't going to be like the rest of these jokers. Elisha said, I'm pursuing after the anointing. Elisha said, Elijah got something that I need. Elijah got something that I want. And I ain't stopping until I get it. I know in this generation we have some of this popular cliche catchphrase, I ain't following no man. Listen, the devil is a liar. The anointing resides within a man. Hello. The apostle Paul was a man and he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Are you listening to me? You got to follow a man if you're going to tap in to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is placed within the fivefold ministry. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Can I get a witness on tonight? Don't be like the sons of the prophets. They had revelation, but they were not willing to act on it because they were full of unbelief. They were about to pass up a once in a lifetime opportunity. 
Elisha told them to hold their peace and I don't blame him. You got to block out the naysayers. If you don't block them out, they're going to strip you of your once in a lifetime opportunity to tap into that double portion anointing. I don't know about you, but I got my mind made up that I'm getting the anointing. I'm going to get everything that God's got for me. I've got my mind made up that I ain't walking away. I'm not going to listen. That's what I did when I realized the type of woman Pastor Carolyn was. I couldn't look at her as my first cousin. Amen. I couldn't just look at her. Oh, that's just my first cousin. That's my dad's niece. No, I looked at her as a woman of God walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. She had something that I desired and I pursued her. I served her in the ministry. I was a water boy. I got a water for her. I got a top for her. I was willing to do anything to be able to tap in to that anointing of the Holy Ghost and there came a time when it was time for me to part with her and move on with my life. She laid her hands on me so I can receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit that was on her life. My God, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you willing to humble yourself? Are you willing to serve tables? Are you willing to minister? Are you willing to serve the the man or the woman of God. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to tap in to the anointing of the Holy Spirit? For some of you, all you might be able to do is sow a seed. All you may be able to do is listen to that CD or listen to that video or watch that program on the internet, but do whatever it takes because every time you make that effort, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it's coming on your life. God's preparing you to receive that mantle God is preparing you to walk away with that anointing to go and do exploits in the name of Jesus. My God, I feel the presence of God here. Listen to this. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 6 through 8. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Elijah said, As the Lord liveth and as thy... Listen to what he said. This is where some people miss it. Elijah said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth i will not leave thee and they went on do you see that as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth as long as you are walking in the anointing of the holy ghost i'm gonna keep following you but if you ever become dead spiritually i got to pack up and move on because i'm after the anointing the bible says it's not my power my God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Can I preach just a few minutes? He said, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. I can't follow somebody that's dead. I can't follow somebody that's dry. My God, I got too much demons to fight. I got too much impossible situations that I got to deal with. My God, I need someone with the anointing that every time they open their mouth, it empowers me, it equips me, it anoints me to deal with them devils on my job, to deal with them demons that I gotta work with. My God, I can't go without it. I need to have access to somebody that can bring me in the presence of God, that can speak the word of God with power. That's what they said about Jesus. They say he ain't like the Sadducees, he ain't like the Pharisees, for his word is with power. Every time he opened his mouth, my life is being changed. My life is being transformed. My life is being impacted because it's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by education. But it's by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My God, I feel the anointing right now. I said it's by the anointing. It's by the anointing. I ain't got time. Man, if you ain't got the anointing, I got to move on. I got marital problems that I got to deal with. I got problems in my family.